we are going to put the jaw liners in the vise. That means a piece of wood on either side. You could use plywood. I've got a piece of elm that I've taken from an old uh, unit that I had. So it's upcycled, recycled again. And what I want to do is add a piece of wood one inch either side of the vise like this. And then my vise jaw is going to actually be extended beyond the side of the vise just to give it an extra width. So instead of it being nine inches wide, it's going to be 11 inches wide in my case. I've got to cut these to length. So I'm just going to go to the bottom of my vise, cut two of those. Feels a little bit awkward working with a vise again and a bench, but very nice. And I'm going to show you how to put some leather on one of the jaws. And uh, that will, I'll explain that when I do it. New vice always feels a little bit awkward until you get used to them, until they break in. They do need breaking in a little bit. So I need two of these. Frighten a mark in this bench because it's so brand new. hole right through the midsection of this piece here. Just one 3 16 hole. Count to sink it. I want these, I don't want any screws sitting above the top because uh, of the surface. Because we're going to put the vice jaw over that. And just a couple of screws. Now you can glue this if you want to, it's entirely up to you. Um, I'm not sure that you need to because um, you may want to take it off for some reason sometime in the future. So. I would just go ahead and flush this with the top of your bench with the very top here, up against the side of the jaw, drive your screw. So on this side. bit high. Nice. On the inside of the jaw here, I'm going to cut this uh, jawliner to length, this one here. So just get this in there, make your mark. We've got a couple of things to do to this to make this work. One is we've got the protruding heads inside from the screws that hold the vise to the apron front. I probably wouldn't cut the second jaw to length yet till this one's in and fixed and you know it's exactly where it is. We're going to line the next one up with it. Ah, 
caught the screw head then. Just clean it up. And drop it in here. And what we're going to do, it's going to be above the bench. I've made this just slightly above the bench and I'm going to rest it on the twin bars inside here just to start with. I'm going to rest it on the twin bars and then afterwards I'm going to nudge it up just so it's off the bars because if it rests on those bars it's going to bind the jaws and then I'm going to plane it flush with the bench when I've done. These are the two offending bolt heads there. So line this up with the end here. And then since this, make your impression. So I've got my impression there. And I have to make a recess for the bolt head and the washer part to it. Well, this is the same size bit I used when I did my apron pieces, which is five eighths in my case. And then as I said, it's a little stiff yet. That fits nicely just off the two bars. Hold this without pinching your fingers. Like this, and then we can tap it flush if it needs tapping. I'm going to put two screws on here. I'm going to go above. I'm going to go all the way through these two pieces because this is so narrow that if I don't the chances are it will just split anyway. to sink. I would count to sink them good and deep, you don't want the heads to come through. And then some long screws. One, two, three and four. So these are really independent of the vise. They're just going around it. Sounds like my drill's going a little down. And that should be it. So that's this, now I can plane this down. On the front one, we're gonna cut this one to length. 
plane this end up square. So I'm taking care not to go all the way through here. This goes on here to get the exact length. Like this. And this is the one we're going to be lining. So we're going to put the leather a pad of leather, a piece of leather on the front edge, front face, not the back one. I found that the leather on the front vice jaw holds everything just about perfectly and stops things from slipping when I'm using the vice. for the leather now. Keep it clean. I'm just using double-sided tape to put the leather onto this and I'll show you what I've worked out works best over the years. I've tried every different way but what I found was that, so let me clean this up first. What I found was if I have the leather wrapped around the wood and held between the vise and the wood, it holds forever. Almost. This goes in here next. I'm going to take a strip of a double sided tape. This is a three quarter inch strip down here. off there and I want the furry side on the outside, the suede on the outside so I'm going to line this up along this edge here just like that and it's going to come down the top and down on the inside this way so this is my next part is drop this in here. This can sit on top of the, the bars because um, because it's not too much. I'm going to pull this back in a minute here and I'm going to plane this down. But I'm going to put two screws in that back edge next. I'm going to pre-drill the holes. And I want to make sure I don't go through the, the inside face of my wood. These, this is just a pilot hole now. So I'm checking my length to make sure. I'm going to drill in here. And secure this. Keep that 
I'm going to pull this back and I'm going to plane this top down flush. This is going to go with the bench top here, like this. So I have a lot to take down there. It's going against the grain on one and with the grain on the other, whichever way I go. I might leave it. catching that end grain of the side pieces there. That's going to work. Leather over the top next. I'm out of breath already. So stretch it nice and tight. Like this. Hold it back. I've got some wider tape here just to take it down the inside face. And that will hold the tape. The tape really works just fine. It's enough, it's not ever really under any pressure this way because it's always being compressed. Like this. If you pull this, just drop it over and then press it for down from the middle and stretch it towards the outside. Like that. Take your knife and run it along that bottom edge. And that's it, it's just trimming that down here. And you've got a working vise now. I think will last you forever, I don't know. Very nice. This really finishes off the vise and you feel like you have total control and of the vise. And Just break that corner back from there and there. And that's the vise done. So we're well underway to beautiful finish. Very nice. My vise is ready to go. Uh, the one thing I've got left to do now, I've got to put some uh, braces on the underside of the bench to hold the wedges in place. I'll show you how I do that. The last thing before finishing, I want to put the, um, there's a couple of drop down pieces of wood that I screw on the underside over the wedges that hold the legs square against the end 
and I want to put those in next and then all of the construction work I think will just about be done. So what I've done is I've measured down here, this is five inches and this is five inches and I've just made an angle, it can be just about any angle you want on there, 30 degrees will be fine. I'm going to cut through these two at once. You can drill through about an inch from the end or something like that. Like this. screws ready. I'm going to have to go underneath the bench. Let me show you what I would do. I would take the lighter end of the bench, the vice is with you over there, lift up here. And then your retainers. And they just drop on. So put the angle, I'm not sure if you can see, I'm gonna put the angle on, on the face like this and then just slide it up somewhere, anywhere along the length of that. And then just drop that screw in. <laughs> That's it. So we do the others just the same. So that you can always flip that up. If you need to knock your wedge out now, you can flip that up out of the way, pull your wedge. For dismantling. Same up here. One more. Oh, that was my head. And that's it. So we're ready now to start applying some finish, that's the next stage. When it comes to putting a finish on your workbench, that's what I'm just about to do. The reason I put a finish on is because it keeps the bench clean later. When you're using the bench over and over, you've got oils, different things that you're working with sometimes, it helps keep the bench clean. So I'm putting a coat of outdoor furniture oil on. This will work just fine. You could use Danish oil, you could use any finish, you can use polyurethane if you like. I don't want a finish that is slick, I want something that has a little bit of friction to it. This one is easy to repair, it's, and it's just a wipe on, it's, this is a natural oil, a natural finish, so it's, it does have a little bit of pigment to it, so. But I think one or two coats of this will work fine, and uh, it goes on very easily with a rag. Wipe on, wipe off. And you can go with a second or a third coat if you feel you want to. I usually go with two coats. And there's not much more to this type of finish than 
you see me doing now. So I'm going to keep going until I've got the legs done and the top done. It's very, very easy as you can see. It's just like wiping it down with a cleaner or something. This is so exciting. We're getting ready to be using our own bench. We just made it. We've done every bit of it. We've used our hands. We've used our minds. We're in the zone now. This is really equipping you to start building your furniture, building your woodworking projects. And I feel so excited for you. I've made this bench so many times, but this one is an update of the one I've been making. I've developed a lot of the ideas for it, the laminated aprons, the retainers, the wedging to the legs, things like that. The dismantleability of it is very quick and very easy. I love it, I love it, I love it. And it works, it works as well as any bench I've ever worked at. That's the neat thing about it. It's not fancy, it's very functional. So, you are on your way. I'll catch the ends later. I'll put it on here. I'm probably a painter's nightmare here. This works just fine. And it's water-based, this. That's what I like about it. It's low VOCs. How simple could that be? Look at that. My workbench is ready to go almost ready. Nice. So now I'm going to catch the underside. I do this apron here, things like that. This is definitely a celebration moment for me. I feel like I've been working towards this point for 50 years to come up with the ultimate workbench, the one that you build. That's what makes it the ultimate workbench. I've just finished this. You've watched me work through it. I've taken my wood from in the corner there, planed all the surfaces, glued it together, made the laminations, made the joinery using simple hand tools, just ordinary everyday woodworking hand tools. I'm hoping you feel inspired to go out and buy the tools Get your wood together and start building. This is your way into doing it yourself. You can build your workbench and have a workbench that will last you for a lifetime.